Good day, and welcome to another edition of One on One with Swope Health. I am your host, Eric Wesson. Thanks so much for joining us today. We've got a great uh, podcast in store for you today. Joining me today are two members of Washington Wheatley Neighborhood Association. They are Robin Humphreys and Marlon Hammonds. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Washington Wheatley. Okay, so first of all, I always like to introduce my guests. So, Robin, where are you from? I am born and raised Kansas City, Missouri. W- went to school where? Uh, I went to high school at Paseo, and I went to college at Rockhurst University. What about elementary school? I went to Missouri Elementary School. E.C. Missouri. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Marlon? Uh, born and raised in Washington Wheatley. Uh, went to Phillips. Uh, Linwood, Lincoln, Warrensburg, Missouri, um, back in Kansas City. You know what's interesting, and I often say this when I have guests on the show, is none of the elementary schools that I went to growing up are open. And as a matter of fact, outside of Southeast, none of the high schools or junior high schools that I went to are open. So it's always interesting to hear where people went to school that and I went to Missouri that's why I know oh, EC wow. Missouri yes, yes, yes. Yes. The neighborhood school and of course it's no longer open so yeah it's not it's not open either so Washington Wheatley give us the boundaries of where that is at 18 to 27th Street prospect to I-70 so it's a developing let's call it a developing neighborhood association neighborhood so what are some of the good points that you got going on there i think some of the good points that we have is uh, our housing initiative i think housing is paramount on transforming and uh, allowing our neighborhood to keep up with the growth of the city Um, we have a accelerated program that land bank and the city council um, Specifically, uh, Melissa uh, um, Hasley uh, is doing for us. And what we think that is most important is that people in the neighborhood have opportunity to work, to be able to develop skills and keep that skill in the neighborhood so we can continue on. It's going to take more than one round of uh, initiatives, uh, probably the next 30 years. Uh, we've got 95 acres of vacant property, so that's a lot of opportunity to build houses. 95 acres? Yes. So is that like vacant lots? Vacant lots. Yes. Okay. Vacant lots. So, so, Robin, building on those, where's the money coming from? Uh, well, essentially, the builders will have to come in with their own financing. Um, and hopefully there will be some incentives for them to be able to build so it won't be um, as strenuous on their you know, finances to be able to build those homes. Um, and then I wanted to add something else. Um, the fact that we have an active neighborhood association is a great thing for our neighborhood. Mm-hmm. There's a level of camaraderie that our neighborhood has that you know really, I mean, it's amazing. It's awesome. It allows for things to happen in our neighborhood, um, just us being able to come together and work together to make the make the neighborhood what we want to see. So is this deemed as affordable housing that's yes. going to be built there? Yes. So what <laughs> what will the range of the houses be? You talking 195 to $235,000. Is that considered affordable? Well, it's attainable. Uh, <laughs> if you work at McDonald's, yeah, you can't but nobody works at McDonald's and they turn around and buy a brand new Escalade. If you like Cadillacs, you're going to buy one that you can afford and then you're going to trade up mm-hmm. once you go from fries to flipping burgers. <laughs> so that's what you need to do in a house. I think we got it kind of backwards. We got a lot of, we got a lot of existing starter homes that you can get in for a little or nothing. We have the Abandoned Housing Act program that if you just see a house that's been abandoned you want to fix this house up, go through the nonprofit organization in the area and take it to the legal process and the house can be deeded over to you. That's your start. Then you sell that house, fix it up, keep it nice, sell it, move to the next house, move to the next one. 
and you can end up in a largest house uh, in our neighborhood. We have houses that have sold recently four hundred thousand dollars. Hmm. And the reality is that we need mixed incomes in the yes. neighborhood. We right. need Absolutely. that to drive so economic development in the neighborhood. Um, and right now, that is something that we are lacking. Mm -hmm. You're lacking mixed it. income? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So So when you say you're working on that, how are you working on it? Because those individuals that f can afford the $400,000 house, they, they're the ones that could live anywhere. But they decided to stay or move into Washington Wheatley. Mm-hmm. And so now with the housing market being what it is, you don't have to have very much house for $400,000 anymore. That's true. You know, you can have a, maybe two bedrooms or three bedrooms and a garage and you can slap a $450,000 price tag on it. But what we're requiring too, um, especially with the accelerator program, is that they're building comparable homes to the existing footprint. Um, now, it may not be the same square footage, but as far as the look and feel of the home, it essentially is going to blend into what is already existing in the neighborhood. So, I think that makes a difference. So, what are some of the other good things that are taking place in Washington Wheatley? Because that is really significant in being able to get, you know, 95 vacant lots filled. Um, what about rehabbing? Are you doing any home rehabs going on over there? Yes, we're doing rehab. We've been always doing rehab because of the abandoned housing act and because our neighborhood, when I was growing up going to Lincoln, most of the individuals that were homeowners were a little older. Now they've died off. Mm -hmm. uh, when we were going to school, uh, they told us, get an education and leave. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a good job of that. We left and went to Dallas and D.C. and never came back. Uh, so the houses didn't uh, go to the next generation. Um, now we're starting to see those being opportunities. And because we have those vacant lots, it's like when you smile and you have missing teeth, the infill houses is going to make the smile look better. So those are hand in hand working together. Um, the, the other things that are happening, because we're concentrating on rooftops, but rooftops need service, and that's the retail. So if we look at 27th and Benton, uh, Kay White is doing that whole block. Uh, she's going to offer um, convenience store, coffee shop, um, UPS. She's working on UPS, Topsies. So a lot of good things are happening there, and we want that to continue. Mm -hmm. So the key is, is to look at all the business nodes, Prospect, uh, 27th, 23rd, 18th, and then kind of concentrate, uh, apply for grants, uh, encourage um, ATA to work with us to have incentives to make sure that we can have the services that are going to drive people to move into the neighborhood because we do have the housing opportunities. So what about uh, grocery stores? Because we talk about health, and health is very uh, important. And when we talk about developing neighborhoods and sustaining them because people need to be healthy. So you've got the sun fresh there on Prospect. They've got some fresh fruits and vegetables and meat and dairy products. What else, is that working? I think it is. Uh, when we were coming up, we had Milgram, Safeway, um, mm -hmm. Brooklyn, I think it was a &P. Uh, Those were the local grocery stores, you walk to those. Now, we, I guess with the convenience stores are being, um, replacing that. And we have the um, Canby who offers fresh food. Um, but where, does Canby deliver or are they putting them in the grocery stores? They're putting them in the convenience stores. It's an 18th Benton, uh, 18th and Benton. Canby is not there, but the one on Truman is there. Uh, 27th Benton, um, uh, 27th and Prospect. So they're, they're, that's the fresh fruit piece. Most of the stores, the convenience stores are offering restaurant, uh, come there, order, take the food out. Mm -hmm. So you got, you got food. Um, and I think once you start to see a trend, uh, more services, 
I think the other stores will catch on and they'll adopt that. It's an opportunity. Robin? I agree. It is an opportunity. (laughs) It is an opportunity, but I can't say that. Um, You know, some of the options that they're providing as far as hot meals are not necessarily healthy options. Mm -hmm. Um, They are definitely not going to help people live longer. Um, Not only that, I don't, I personally don't feel like the food is affordable. Um, and I think that really is a huge issue. Um, I don't know what the numbers look like, but I would be curious to know what theft looks like. Um, and you and know, sun fresh is not it's not good. Yeah, I can tell you that. And as a as an educated person, I don't feel comfortable going to the grocery store. Now I do go in there when I need something and I need to get it fast. Otherwise, I don't go there just because it does is not a comfortable place for me. Um, just because of what I'm seeing the hanging, you know, have going on in the parking lots. As a as a single black woman, I don't feel comfortable, and mm-hmm. I don't feel safe. Um, so that kind of deters me from wanting to go there. Mm-hmm. So that's just how it is for me as a as a woman. So Emmett and community builders are supposed to be working on that. Uh, And I know Don Maxwell, that's the first thing that he talks about is making sure that he's getting added security there. That bus stop on the corner, uh, 31st Street, that's a mess. And they have the police are putting a can center there uh, across the street. So you think that'll help? Uh, It's possible. I mean, only time will tell. Um, But honestly, I I don't know. And... um, you know, right now I do my shopping at High V. I I go all the way to Independence and or North Kansas City to go to the grocery store. And it's mainly because um, I like affordable prices for my food. Like, you know, it again, I have a I live in a large old home in Washington Wheatley that is extremely expensive. So I have to be smart about how I budget my money. And, you know, if that means I have to go a little further out, then I'm willing to do that because I understand and recognize that I have to, you know, be conscious of my money. Mm -hmm. So. So crime, in other words, is an issue in that area is what you're saying. Yes, I've had my own personal experiences. (laughs) So, yes, crime is an issue. Okay, so uh, what is being done about it? I mean, you know, we talk about it. For every problem, there's a solution. And that's what I try to tell my kids. So what's the solution? That's a good question. I, well, for me personally, I my motto is be the change that you want to see. Mm-hmm. So for me, I feel like, you know, as a resident of the neighborhood, we have to take charge. We have to be vigilant. Um, so, you know, just simple things like, you know, with my neighbors, we have a group chat. So we all keep in touch. We let each other know what's going on. If there's an issue, if there's a problem, if there's something that needs to be reported to 311, you know, my neighbors watch out for me. If they see somebody on my porch, they're like, hey, somebody is on your porch. I don't know. It don't look like you know them. I'm like, thank you so much. <laughs> and, and vice versa. So we're always looking out for each other. And that that does make a difference. It helps. Um, it's not always enough. But, you know, it is a start in the right direction. And and the crime goes hand in hand in uh, being able to sell houses, being able to give better services. Um, there's seven things that the neighborhood is trying to do, and that's one of the pillars of making it safe. Do you feel safe? But if we look around, there's a lot of things that, uh, because we have all these vacant lots, the environment has an effect upon our mental psychic. And because of that, it kind of creates the culture that we're seeing today. So mm-hmm. picking up trash, we have in the past had uh, programs. Um, just lately, we have trash cans on corners. Mm-hmm. So instead of just throwing the trash, throw it near the trash can, or at best get out and put it in the trash can. But we do applaud uh, those individuals. and. It, seems to be making a difference. Um, We understand that um, with the broken window theory, Mm -hmm. you can kind of tell which way the neighborhood is going. So we try to focus on making sure that we do uh, make sure individuals fix their houses up. So we have 
apply for the CCED uh, program, and we have minor home repair uh, for about, I think, 20 25. houses, 25 houses. So that is a start of making a difference. If we can get the people that are residents, stakeholders, to buy in to investing into your community, which starts with us, then we can show the political policy that creates a, we're going to pick the trash up. Uh, when we pick trash up on Wednesday, tomorrow, mm -hmm. um, if the bag breaks, just don't leave the trash out in the street. Mm -hmm. Better yet, you know, and all the trucks have uh, brooms and uh, shovels, they could actually fix that problem instead of leaving it for us. So though that's a policy change, that's a mentality change, how they view our neighborhood. So mm -hmm. if they look at us and we don't even do it for ourselves, then it does send the message. Uh, even with the police, we got to respect ourselves for them to respect us. Mm -hmm. So we send a message with the way we act, with our culture, and sometimes it needs to be adjusted. This time for us to move forward, it's imperative that we adjust our culture, and that's the way we act. It's important for them to view us as a stakeholder in the city, you know, mm -hmm. instead of just holding on and just paying by the uh, coattail. When you say you got the seven pillars, that are what are they? Did you just give us all seven of them or just one okay, or two so of them? I gave you one. So, so we, the identity, we got to create an identity. We got to know who we are, our culture, our past. Um, and then we got to activate. We got to come and like, <coughs> receive funds from LISC to create a charrette. We want to find out what these houses are going to look like, what houses look like in Washington Wheatley, and then what we want the houses to look like going forward. Then we want to <coughs> get this education and then activate, then apply it to us. Uh, activation is one, Ident identifying us, going through identity changes, culture, all that. How do we project ourselves to the future? Then safety. Safety is important because nobody wants to move into a neighborhood. The crime is up, you go home, come back, and all your stuff is gone. So. It's so important, uh, especially if you're raising kids. And then I talked about the environment. Um, you know, we, hey, we environment, the house you live in, dictates the health um, all the way down the line. So our environment, we do it. So then we talk about the housing. Then we talk about, so that's, that's rooftops and retail. The retail is the services. So services is one. Um, what's first? housing or retail. Yeah, if I'm buying a house, I want, I want to make sure I have services. If I'm putting my services in there, I want to make sure the house is there. So it's chicken and egg. We got to almost do it both at the same time and encourage them and hold, them, hold tight. When um, things happen, we, as a neighborhood, we have to rally, rally behind. And if it happens that uh, on the housing side, we got to rally. If it happens on the retail side, like at 31st and Prospect, uh, neighborhoods got to come together and rally behind that. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then economic activity. We got to create jobs. Um, if I can move to Washington Wheatley and get a job, get a house, uh, feel safe, culture's tight, go to 18th Vine, have a good time, uh, it's a place where I want to be. That information sold to the city will attract. And that's all we can ask for. Hmm. Robin, what are your thoughts? Um, I think Washington Wheeling is doing a great job as far as executing those pillars. Uh, right now we have um, a, a grant through KC Digital, so we're doing computer classes for, um, it's open to all adults um, to come and get education in computer literacy, and then we're providing free laptops for those who complete at least 15 hours of computer training. Uh, we also do financial literacy workshops because we want to make sure that not just, we, we started with a program for our children. Um, the future program is going to be for families. 
So we want to make sure the whole house understands financial literacy as a whole, um, because that's something that we, when I think about growing up, it wasn't something that we necessarily talked about. And if you talk to a lot of African-American people, they'll say the same thing. It just wasn't something that they talked about in their household. Uh, but it should be a conversation that we have because we need to be able to understand money. Um, we're also, um, the program that uh, Marlon mentioned about the trash cans, that's our Art in Action litter, litter Prevention Campaign. Um, so we have, that's a resident-led program uh, where the, our neighbors are managing those trash, those trash cans and they were decorated by local artists and some of those artists are our residents. Um, and we we're just making sure, and that's one thing, I'm, I'm very proud of that program because I see people using those trash cans. Like people that are driving in their cars, they will park and get out and put their trash in the trash. Um, and that, that speaks volumes. It, it does make a difference. Um, then, of course, like Marlon said, we have the, the home repair program. Um, so once we execute that, that will make a huge difference. Uh, we're doing the charrettes and the sept heads so we can make sure that people understand the standards of how we want to live in this neighborhood, what is expected, what is required. Um, and I'll say in most neighborhoods in the urban core, that's not something that you see. Um, most people that I know that move into the urban core, it's because I can get away with whatever I want to. Mm. And we're changing that narrative. When you live in Washington Wheatley, this is what is expected. And if that is not something you want to abide by, this is probably not the neighborhood for you. Um, so, and then, as I mentioned earlier, the camaraderie among neighbors. Um, recently had the incident where someone broke into my house. Mm -hmm. My neighbors came through for me. They showed up. They made sure that, you know, the, the suspect was apprehended and, business was handled and I'm like that made me so proud because I'm like I have the best neighbors ever the mm -hmm. best neighbors ever I'm like they could have been at work anything but they was out there running around chasing this man for me <laughs> <laughs> and you know that really is a blessing that because that makes me feel even safer knowing that I have neighbors that look out for me mm -hmm. um, and so Washington Wheatley is a place that anybody would want to live okay so on the other side of that, you know, glowing review about your neighbors, you have, you're bordered by areas that are really at risk. Uh, Washington Wheatley also includes that liquor store on 18th and Benton, and I see the homeless tents. It's like every time I drive by there, there's a new additional tent there. What can be done or what would be your suggestion to deal with the homelessness that's going on in your area? Because it goes all the way to Truman Road, right? So the fires and things that were breaking out in the wintertime when the homeless people were going into vacant buildings and starting fires to keep warm and then they get out of hand or they just leave them after they get through. So what can you all do or what would you suggest the city do to help you with the homeless problem? If I'm being honest, I, I really don't have a solution. Um, mm -hmm. I've been on calls where, you know, I've heard some of these people speak and, you know, some of them are like, we just want to live off the land. We just want to live mm -hmm. off the land. And I don't know, how, how do you combat that? Like, if mm -hmm. they just want to live off the land, how do you how do you combat that? Um, but why is it in in urban core areas versus... I've never seen a tent on War Parkway. I've never seen a seen a tent on well, what or, uh, or Well, <laughs> what I will say, it probably won't stay there long because they they yeah. don't allow that. They don't allow that. Okay, so I have, but it doesn't stay. Yeah. The thing is that we have that the, it's the big issue in mental health mm -hmm. is mm. one thing, and maybe the state has funds that needs to be released so we can get them before they become used to their new culture. Mm -hmm. Because everybody has been born, nourished, and you just don't pop up born in a tent. Right. So it's a learned habit and you become accustomed to it mentally. Maybe it affects you which allows you to be accustomed. And that's all that we hear. This is what I want. And if on the right meds, 
they could see that there's much more than this daggone bridge that you're living under. Mm -hmm. So I would like to see more mental health services, mobile health services that actually go to, because they don't trust. So maybe you set it up at McDonald's, because everybody runs through 14th and uh, Prospect mm -hmm. and Wendy's, all those places that they hang out. Um, let's go to them and then offer that support. Yeah, but it has to be comprehensive because everybody's situation is different. Right. Um, different. Right. Yeah. And, you know, when you really stop and think about it, and, and I have been on 18th Street in over by Lincoln College Prep, and they have that village over there in that wooded area mm -hmm. that... I have seen, they send a SWAT team in, they have the helicopters, they close the streets off, they send a SWAT team in that area, but they don't go in there to move the people, they go in there to see if they need services. And I was like, well, why do y'all send a SWAT team in there to do that? They said, because you get in there, they got guns, they got dogs, you know, we just trying to be real friendly when we go in that area. Mm -hmm. But I was talking to one of the guys when I was covering a story on it, and they and he told me, this is all I got. And it was real cold, and I'm like, so why aren't you, like, wanting to go into a shelter or something? He said, because this is all I have, and I can't take my dog in a shelter. I can't take the things that I've, this is all I own in my whole life. These are everything I own in my whole life is right here in this tent. I can't take that in a shelter, so I stay out here. And I guess finally the police got the the message that, you know, you're not gonna move them. So you go in there and do what you can to help them exist where they are. So I understand your point about people saying uh, they want to live off the land or they want to live this. And you know the Bible even says the poor is gonna always be with us. But on the same token, I believe there's a lot more the city can do. Yeah. Because when, remember when they was camped out on City Hall, they got them up out of there, mm -hmm. put a fence around it, and now you got the disconnect between the community and the city and the city hall area. Mm -hmm. But they got them up out of there. They let them yeah. stay there for a while, but then <laughs> after a while, they're like, y'all got to go. Yeah, there are they things that can be done. I definitely <laughs> agree. Um, but it, it requires force. Um, so that's pretty obvious. But then one of the, the other thing you said is like, like they said they want to live off the land, but to me it becomes an issue when they still need taxpayers to do stuff for them. And that is where I have the issue because I'm like, if you can live off the land, then you live <laughs> off the land. Versus, you know, now we need something from the people that go to work every day. And to me, you look like an able-bodied person that can also go to work. Um, and I don't, and again, that probably, again, goes back to mental health. We have to be able to get to the root cause of the issue Um and try and break those barriers to get them to a place where they, you know, can be an active citizen. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how we do that, but again, getting to the root problem, I think, would be helpful. And that goes back to the mental health services. Mm -hmm. Getting to the root problem and understanding what the root problem is, those are always two different conversations. Mm -hmm. Because, well, we might view it as the root problem it's not what they view it as the root problem. And I don't think drugs are necessarily always going to be the solution. Um, I really don't. Um, what kind of drugs? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Neither I, drug is always the solution. Well, <laughs> Some people have mental imbalances yeah, that, that they need right. that drug to keep them focused. Right. And... That's the drug I'm talking about. But if you can wean yourself off of that, um, 23rd and Highland, my grandmother, uh, from on my father's side, that's where they live. So it's near and dear to my heart. Those are my stomping grounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have taken over. It's like a city within a city over there. And uh, they have a def definitely a different way of life. Uh, the food is brought to them. So that at least can have some decency, but it's, uh, I thought this year we were gonna see the end of 23rd and Highland. 
So uh, tell us what Twenty Third and Highland is. It's, you said a city within a city. Because yeah, because I, I know they have a mayor. They have somebody that runs it because we, we had um, at Wendell Phillips some things stolen, and uh, the person went to the individual who knows everything, and they got it back. Hmm. So that's a system within a system because it works. Um, it was cleaned when we had the uh, ser the World Series here. Uh, we went in and cleaned all of it, and then fast forward to the day, it's back even stronger. Um, it it was expanding off of Highland, mm -hmm. uh, the Woodland side and the Vine side over to the mm -hmm. Florida side. Uh, v Weiser Dixon cleaned all that up, mm -hmm. um, so it's been displaced, but it's probably been concentrated in the. Uh, up in those, those bushes. Yeah. And they sent a helicopter, they closed the street off, and they yeah. sent the social workers up there, and the social workers were like, I'm not going in there unless they, you know, send the SWAT team in there uh, to get people kind of off a of high alert when they see us come in there. So, yeah. yeah, it's just sad. And all of that is in your neighborhood association. Uh, no. That would be the no. Phillips Neighborhood Association, which is the sister. We... On the border, just like Santa Fe is 27th Street in the middle, uh, Prospect in the middle would be Wendell Phillips and Washington Wheatley. Okay. Uh, so as we wrap up, any parting thoughts, positive reality, or what you would view as negative? What would you like to leave people with? We positive. Need positive. Positive. Always. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to let people know that Washington Wheatley is here. And for those who don't know, now you know that mm -hmm. Washington Wheatley is on the move and hey, it's open. Um, if you want a house, we're gonna get you into a house. If you wanna work hard, you'll be able to either buy one or go through the sweat equ equity um, in using the Abandoned Housing Act. It's a state statute that we helped put together and it's been running since the 90s. Mm -hmm. So. It's a good tool. It's a good tool. Um, as I said earlier, be the change that you want to see. Um, that is what Washington Wheatley is doing. We encourage every other neighborhood to do the same. Um, because even though, you know, these acts might seem small, you know, when you do them collectively, they become something great. So, Our guest today was Ms. Robin Humphreys and Mr. Marlon Hammond, and they are with the Washington Wheatley Neighborhood Association. Thanks so much for joining us and uh, continued success with the things that you're trying to do. As always, I have the greatest viewing audience in the world. Till next week, remember, tough times don't last, tough people do. Until next time, peace.